I was trying to control time, essentially, yeah. just yes. constantly. And it would cause me a great deal of pain because I would take it personally mm. when people were late, when oh, people right, canceled yeah. late, when people had to reschedule mm. anything last minute. It was like I was so fucking rigid with time and it caused me so much stress. But I just thought as long as I just stay on this track, like I'll be happy. This is Other Maria, the podcast of our real life conversations about personal evolution, society, relationships, spirituality, and everything else. We're getting vulnerable in these good faith talks and sometimes respectfully disagreeing about which of us is wrong. Just kidding. There's no right and wrong. We're just two friends sitting around talking shit. Wait, talk about deep shit, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah, enjoy. What's up, guys? Oh my god, do we sound different? Oh, minus my cold. <laughs> Y'all, we did it. <laughs> so crazy wait just like real quick too you know what i realized we haven't done in a long time we haven't what we haven't been like i'm maria and i'm the other maria oh my god because maybe that was dumb i don't know no i love it hi i'm maria and i'm the other maria oh my gosh guys i had a cold but now it's actually allergies to my own cat it's perfectly timed for the first episode that we're doing with all our new equipment i know perfectly timed for me to (laughs) We got new equipment, guys. We got microphones. And microphone stands and that little audio interface. Thank you. (laughs) Um, In order to record with our fancy new microphones. Thank you to you, Maria. Not me, Maria, for doing all the research. Yeah. Clicking the buttons to make these things arrive at our door. The audio interface just shut off in the middle of us recording, so I don't know that I made the right choice, but here it is. I don't think it has anything to do with you. More likely, it's just whatever planet is in the microwave. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Well, here we are. Here we are. No idea what we're talking about. And the the fun thing about this is that I feel trapped up against the wall here like I can't. (laughs) Oh my god, you can't like flip her. Yeah, what the fuck? I'm physically uncomfortable. For our many, many regular listeners. Just kidding. But all seven of you. All high five. Seven. Seven. That's a lot. Amazing. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, I think we have like 30. I have no idea. But anyway, we mention a lot that Maria loves to just like move around a lot and like be a noodle on the floor while recording and like truly like pretzel herself around and like cannot sit still lots of like food words are great descriptors noodle Noodle, pretzel pretzel. (laughs) jumping bean (laughs) that's a good one (laughs) what else can we do the point is i don't sit still but i am currently but now she's gonna have to because of these fancy microphones plastered against the wall my head is between the wall and the microphone and i intentionally (laughs) push myself back this far because otherwise I will not talk into the microphone. <laughs> uh, now that you're mentioning your positioning, I'm noticing it. It's really Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't either. I feel so cozy when I get to just not move and sit here with the mic right here. I'm like, yes. What's up, guys? Hi. This is our ASMR segment. What should we talk about with ASMR? You <laughs> I can't do it. The ASMR voice. I can't do it. For some reason, I feel like I can't click into it right now. Yeah, I know what you mean. Also, when we first got these last week and we like played around with them, Maria and I did that for like for like a good five minutes. <laughs> we just talked like just that. ASMR talk to each other. <laughs> she was doing better last week. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Yeah, you keep. I'm embarrassed t- this oh, week. Oh, oh <laughs> mm, I think we found our topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. I also downloaded Audible and I still haven't gotten one book. That's great, because I changed my mind about which book I want you to read. Oh, great. I originally suggested (laughs) Michael Singer, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I changed my mind. I want you to read The Big Leap. Okay, yeah. You mean listen to, and I'm, see, man. That counts. No, I know it does. At this point in time. I know it does, but I'm just like, I don't know why I can't. It's because I don't do chores. (laughs) And everybody's always like, you know, like, I just love listening to a podcast while I like clean and do my dishes and 
fold my laundry and I'm like, I don't do those things. I just live in my own filth. So when would I have the time to listen to a podcast? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I do really like to sit and watch. We've talked about this. I like people's facial expressions and stuff. Yeah. I do really like that a lot. You could also do it like while you're driving because I do it a lot while I'm like walking. I know. I know. I know. I definitely do. No, sometimes in the car I I listen to podcasts now. But the thing is, is that I also have that hands free thing. And sometimes (laughs) I do put YouTube on. It's I know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're a monster. I know. And now my mom is starting to listen to this. She's going to have a panic attack watching videos while I drive. I don't I don't watch it in your lap. No, and I don't watch it. I really don't. For some reason, it's still comforting to know their faces are there. Sure. I I don't really I don't watch it. I'm driving. (laughs) Sorry. I I didn't know what to do. Y'all. I can't move my head. (laughs) I can't wait till we have video. Oh, I forgot to order our. I really want to get those. I do think they'll be helpful. We're getting more stuff for the podcast, you guys. I just think it's so cool because I've been telling everyone this week. It's like not a big deal to anybody else unless you're one of our loyal listeners. But 30-ish, I'm going to say. Fine. Sure. But um, if there's really 30 people listening consistently. Okay. Raise your hand if you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) That would be amazing. I just feel in my heart like I ha- I feel the love from like 30-ish people. <laughs> <laughs> it like feels like 30. And I love you back, each and every one of you. Yeah, it's it just feels like a big deal to me because when we first thought of this during the pandemic, one of the first things we said was like, well, do we need equipment? Should we get equipment? And then totally. pretty quickly we were like, no, let's just start it. Right. But then at pretty regular intervals, it's been like, Oh, and we're going to get equipment and we're going to get equipment. It's true. And for like a year and a half now that we've been working on this podcast. It's crazy. It's still been something that's in the future. Right. And now it's fucking here. And it just feels like a big goal achieved. Something that we followed through on. Totally. Because we've just been following through on this generally. Yeah. And if we hadn't been, then it would never have made sense to get the equipment. Right. But in some ways, too, it's like you said on Instagram, it's like, well, now we're a fishy fish. Now we're a fishy fish. I said a fish. You said a fishy fish and then put a fish. It was amazing. I put sharks. Well, they're technically fish. There's the fish I relate to most because they don't stop moving or they die. (laughs) (laughs) There. She says while wiggling. (laughs) It just feels like a new jump off point to me. Totally professional (laughs) i have had that vision in my head though for so long it makes a difference definitely when you're listening and it's okay we are being meta i get it we got feedback that first episode that we talked about making a podcast but like that was the whole point i mean it's all about our experiences and our and our growth yeah and our growth and our like facing fears and all that crap and like this was a big thing to just start a podcast and like follow through like you were saying yeah and so which is like, not something that we individually tell ourselves that we are good at you and i mm-mm, not at all then right. i think that's the thing like okay i think everyone can relate a lot of people can relate to that feeling of like i never follow through on things you know that super hard voice right what's wrong with me i always start things and can never finish them or i can't even get started and like all that and so like with maria and i it was like we were very aware of that when we started and that was the whole point the whole idea was like let's just start it without trying to make it perfect so like who are you to make a podcast without equipment and we're not the first ones but we're sharing anyway you know it was like who are we to do what's happening oh (laughs) i was trying to burp more discreetly no fair totally fair totally fair we really need video because me being <laughs> fidgety has gotten more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, because she has to like escape out from her little like my microphone cage, <laughs> ten foot microphone cage she's made with the wall and, and the microphone. <laughs> but in my head, I could hear like the nice, like fancy voices that you hear on podcasts, where you're like, "Oh snap!" That's the other thing too for me. It does make it easier to listen to as well. Because you oh, can yeah. literally just hear their voices better. Like, duh. Because, like, that's what mics are for. I'm so excited we did it. We did it. I'm going to tell the audience Should I pause it or do you a story. I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to talk. I'm going to riff. 
but one of my photos was featured on another community page, which to me is a really big deal for visibility. And now it has like 1200 likes and yeah, it just felt like a nod to me from the universe of like, keep going with that creativity. Thanks for picking it back up. Now here's a uh, kudos. Now here's an apartment. Right? <laughs> Is that what you were talking about while I was No, I actually gone. didn't. I was talking oh. about um, Courageous Design on Instagram. Oh! Oh, that was very cool. But also... Amazing. Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah, I heard I've been in sort of a holding pattern, and I was like, oh, cool. She's telling them about the apartment. Maybe I should, though, because... Yeah. See, and that's... Okay, here, that's the fucking thing that I love about it so much, dude, mm-hmm. is that it feels so correct and natural and right and easy and flowing and... <laughs> <laughs> in no way out of the adjective. ordinary mm-hmm. I could add more do you want me to yes okay but it just feels so uneventfully correct mm-hmm. like, <laughs> that I keep forgetting about it yeah totally but I signed a lease for an apartment yes which is a big ass deal huge deal <clears throat> and also huge leap of faith yes I've been living at my parents for so long. It's a little embarrassing to say how long. Four and a half years. Say it. She said it. I just wanted to <laughs> preface that I did note the feeling of embarrassment yeah, with that. Yeah, totally. F- fully fucking aware, too, that... Three of it were a pandemic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. No, but I was also just going to say that like I'm incredibly lucky that that is an option materially and an option... like mentally and emotionally totally I mean at this point I think all the reactions that I get from people when they learn that I live at home is almost everyone's either like oh yeah everyone does that now right because it's true 1000 percent. or they're like oh I wish I could do that yeah yeah I don't know I have a great relationship with my parents and um wait and do you get the the feeling when people say I wish I could do that. It's because of the emotional part of it, not the... Oh, I think both. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, I was saying like I have have a great relationship with my parents and also they have the space. Totally. And they are generous enough to do that. And they, you know, my brother is welcome to do that as well as they like to remind him. Um, (laughs) So we, I mean, we've both done that throughout the years. Uh, Him for much, much shorter periods of time than me. But this is a big... I'm so excited. This is a big leap, which I'm really excited about in some ways and also in other ways. Again, it just feels like it feels very normal. Just yeah. Like, oh, here I go. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, good. Because yeah. it wouldn't have felt that way. No, it wouldn't previously. have. And I look back on the last year of all the things that I learned, like a lot of tightening up of my understanding of my finances, my incredible awareness of my time management the way that I've fallen into and allowed myself to fall into a flow of creativity and generating activities based on inspiration rather than some prescription of someone that's quote unquote successful. All of those things I did not have until now in the past couple of years. And I don't think that it would have been like I'm just set up so well now to kind of like launch or fail. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Failed to launch. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> trust fall. Hashtag, yes. No, you're going to do fucking great. I'm not even slightly worried. Okay. But do you want to give the listeners like a concise description? <laughs> what I mean to say is, do you want to give like a brief idea of what you think you were like to what you are like when you were just describing? Like, oh, do you know what I mean? Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, okay, real quick, it's sounding like the thing you and I joke about a lot of like, just believe in yourself. It's, we have this inside joke between she and I that there's nothing more annoying that like someone's trying to lift themselves out of depression or something and they start following or listening to somebody who's just like, just believe in yourself. Just love yourself. You just Don't have to so, know you can do it. You just have it. to know you can do it. <laughs> and like but how <laughs> it's like what the f- how right. though i think i'm a piece of shit so how, how the am I fuck am i just believe that? in yourself but like i d- 
don't like myself. How the fuck am I going to believe in myself? Know that you are loved. Mm. Yeah, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> and there's a time and place for those sort of, but yeah, anyway. Am vibe. I sounding that way? Okay, well, great. not totally, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. in that vein where it's just like, you know, and I've just come to this place where like I really am like flowing and like my time management. And okay, my I worked money. my ass off. No, you did. You <laughs> did. And that's why I was like, if you could do like talk about it as long as you want, <laughs> but you're so good with words. It'd be fun to hear you say like how you feel like you used to be versus how you are now. Oh, Whatever that Lord. means to you. Okay. Yes. Well. Um, I am 1000% a different person than I was a year ago, which is you really are. very, very cool and surprising. And she really is. I'm thanks, sorry. I can't thanks, <laughs> girl. But you are. <laughs> Love you. It's wild. So, yeah, I think. Let me, let me talk about time management first. Please. Or time philosophy. Time philosophy. Because yeah. that one I know you can also chime in on because of the impact that it's had on you. The impact of you changing has had on yeah. me. Yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Mm, her eyes got mm. so big. <laughs> Basically, I was very much feeling like a victim of time earlier in my life. And I can remember this one relationship like seven or eight years ago where it was great and it would have continued to be great. But I had this very, very rigid idea of you know, we've been together this long, so now it's time for us to move in, and then yeah. it will be time for this. And I love that you're bringing for this that. up. Yeah, I oh. thought about this one recently, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I should bring insane. that up." Sure. Yes, <laughs> but no, that's like a great example of the way that. Okay, but this is how I operated. Yeah, you know, it was like every minute counts, every moment counts. Essentially, that relationship, it was like, okay, we've been together this long. Now we need to take this step. And then in six months, we'll take this next step. And I need you to be on board and all of this so that I don't waste time because I want to have kids. And I was like, what, 31, 31 32? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We I'm are now 38 37. Now. You are 37. Why is everybody doing I'm this? I'm 37? Yes. Did you think you were 38? Kind of, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm getting real excited, y'all. <laughs> this is so funny. My boyfriend just did that. I'm 37? Yes, you're 37. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> I don't fucking hilarious. know. Okay. <laughs> Guess I'm 37. That changes nothing. Yeah. No, so <laughs> the point is just in that space of every moment counts, every week counts. But at the same time, just being pretty unconscious about all of it as far as what felt in alignment. Mm. You know, and I think a lot of it was informed. That wasn't even a thought. <laughs> what? The alignment part. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. It was like I knew I wanted certain things in life and saw other people's recipe for it Mm -hmm. that I don't think most of them necessarily laid out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Like, I know there's certainly other people that are like, I'm going to do this by the time I'm 25 and I'm going to do this by the time I'm 28 and I'm going to be on track to do this by the time I'm 32. I know a lot of people do that. I don't know that any of them are happy. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think by and large, the people that fall into that path of life, it just just the way that it has unfolded. But I was trying to control it. Mm -hmm. I was trying to control time, essentially, just constantly. Yeah. I remember even earlier than that when it would cause me a great deal of pain because I would take it personally Mm. when people were late, when people canceled late, when people had to reschedule Mm. anything last minute. It was like I was so fucking rigid with time and it caused me so much stress. But I just thought I'll I'll get to a place where as long as I just stay on this track, like I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And I also remember just the ridiculous amount of shit that I would try to pack into a day and a week and a year and plan it all out to the minute totally and i would do all of those things but (laughs) i was present for not much of it Mm. like i wasn't fully asleep but i just also wasn't totally you know like it would be like wake up at 5 45 get to a 6 a.m yoga class like leave early get in the shower get on the bus by 7 12 get to work by 7 45 like anticipate the cta back and forth like this crazy hamster wheel, mm-hmm. but I functioned fine like that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I learned how to rest during the pandemic, which was super cool. Mm-hmm. 
I think we have an episode about it. And then, I don't know, I had some bigger revelations about my own perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And I think by last year, it was more like flowing through stuff. And I started to be social probably about a year ago. Remember Mm. when I showed up at Ed's party? And she was like, oh my God, you came. Yeah. Started to be social. And just kind of trust. I think that was a big part of it. Trust that like, Ugh, yeah, I want to see my friends. Right. I'm tired, but I'm going to trust that I'll still get enough sleep. Yeah. And if I don't tomorrow, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean I've screwed something up. Like, I'll just be tired. <laughs> and then I'll get to sleep the next night. Mm-hmm. But then also, I don't know. I just feel like so much of it has to do with trust. But also having so little of a structured schedule Mm -hmm. and really realizing how much I appreciate the flow of it and that I can move intuitively in the world yeah and trust that I'm gonna be okay if I don't check these things off the box and that if I I don't need to plan my workouts. I can trust that I'm going to be inspired to go work out a few times this week. Mm. And if I'm not, then I wasn't meant to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's also brought me to be a lot more flexible and fluid with all of the other people in my life. Mm -hmm. Like We don't need to plan as much. I love to do things at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit if people cancel at the last minute. I don't give a shit if people are late. It is different. It's so different. (laughs) And I think there's also, I'm just realizing that like another big part of it is I remember that I would be really upset when people were late. Oh, right. Yeah. Because I would feel, and this isn't illogical. Like I know a lot of people feel this way. Right. But it can feel disrespectful if executed a certain way. Right. Someone's running late and they don't tell me and they're 20 minutes late and I've been waiting That's how it used to feel. I'm like, that doesn't feel very respectful. Right. And, you know, then I get all up in my head about it. And that was like longer ago. That was. Right. Quite a few years ago. Yeah, because you would you would describe that to me last year that you didn't act that way anymore. But you would describe how previously you felt it was very disrespectful or, you know, took it personally. Right. And I think now I'm just in such a cozy, comfy spot of. This is going to sound pretty out there to some people, but. If I'm, if someone's late or I'm in traffic or whatever it is that could be perceived as like, quote unquote, wasting time, I'm like, ah, I will be present with my feelings. (laughs) I will be present with the universe. (laughs) This is all I want to do anyway. So (laughs) yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. And I used to think if I had known you were going to be late, I would have brought a book. I would have had something to do. Yep. And now I'm so comfortable to like wherever the fuck I am, just like sit there, close my eyes or stare at the sky for five, 20, 60 minutes, just waiting for whoever I don't mind. I mean, not while I'm driving. I won't do that. (laughs) Keep my eyes open. (laughs) Also, or watch YouTube. The other thing, (laughs) the other thing you had said to me before about this was the also realizing you weren't the center of the person's universe oh man that one was beautiful (laughs) okay i do feel the need to date that one yeah 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 yeah. because that was a good decade ago no no i know it's an old one however and this this was a time in my life when i was not well Mm -hmm. and like a lot of stuff going on like a lot of psychological and emotional challenges and i would be so upset if someone (laughs) canceled at the last minute or if they were running late like I remember one time with three of my closest girlfriends from grade school like some of them were back in town and we were all supposed to get coffee at like three o'clock or something and one of them was like can we push back to 3 30 and it was maybe like two o'clock and I felt really upset and then another one was like Oh, absolutely. We can push back to 3.30. Actually, let's make it four because I'm in the middle of something too. And I like the first hour that we all hung out, it was me having a fucking meltdown. And the three of them looking at me like, I don't know what 
to do with you. <laughs> oh, wow. And I remember them I probably being on the verge of like, I can't be your friend if you're going to act like this. <laughs> yeah. Right? And... Yeah, this was in my 20s, y'all. Totally, totally. The dumpster fire of my 20s, which maybe we could talk about that, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, so I had that. That was the most egregious, I think, instances of that. But I had that all the time. I would be so upset when someone canceled or so upset when I set aside a, an evening for someone and they had to reschedule. Like, it would happen all the time. Mm-hmm. And I don't even feel like I'm going to explain this for real, but just like... The realization that I had one day, I was, I can tell you exactly where I was in time and space driving one afternoon. And it just hit me like, oh, wait a second. I get so upset because when I make plans with someone, and like, this is what a shitty state I was in. This is how shitty my life felt to me. Mm -hmm. That if I had plans with you one afternoon, You were saving me from the misery of my life. Mm. I was looking forward to it for days, for weeks. It was the bright spot Mm. that I was looking forward to. Mm. I could not wait. Everything revolved around that because I was so miserable and unhappy and quite unconscious of it, to be perfectly honest. Well, of course, because that's why then you didn't even understand why you were so upset when they canceled. Right. And so my perception was like, I feel this way about the plans that we have. Right. And then it would feel like more egregious disrespect. Yeah. When they didn't handle it that way. And so I'm driving down the street one day. This hasn't happened to me in a while. And all of a sudden I'm just like, oh, maybe they don't feel the same way about our plans as I do. And then I thought of a few friends. I was like, wait, they have kids. (laughs) Like, maybe their kid needed them. You know, like, maybe their kids, this friend that I see once a month for coffee, maybe their kids are more important to them than I am. And I was like, holy shit. And I I swear to God, it was so fucking freeing. I was like, oh, I don't have to take this personally anymore. Yeah, yep. This is, oh, hell yeah. Yep. I was like, that's amazing. And then it was just like, I'm not that important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not that important. That's yes. a good Michelle Wolf. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Totally. And now I think about it and like what a full life I have. And I'm just so excited when I get to make plans with someone that I care about. Mm-hmm. And if they can't or if I can't, it's like I really hope you're going to be understanding with me because I got a ton of shit going on. Yeah. And I'm really understanding with them. Yeah. And like those are the people that I have in my life now. Like totally. I don't have any people that are lunatics of the variety that I was a lunatic and you've always been so maybe not always but you've for a longer time been like super chill about time and plans and stuff I'm so I've always I'm so chill about time and plans yeah and I know how careful you were with me for a long time because of that yeah you know not to say that like I was like the defective one in no. In that scenario, but... No, it's all relative, too, anyway. Like, you did suddenly land more on the side that I'm on. Right. But it doesn't mean that, like, you couldn't have gone, like, somewhere else and still been healthy. Like, it was just, like, so rigid that that was problematic. But, like, certainly I still have friends who, like, care more about, like, being on time than I do. And, I, no. I really like being on, like, jobs. I'm never fucking late. I'm actually just generally pretty on time and I don't think it's even anxiety or anything. I'm on time if like there's a plan and there's a time to meet, etc. That isn't to say, of course, that there aren't times where like, oh God, you know, there's an accident and I'm stuck in traffic, so I'm gonna be late. But all I was gonna say is I'm really flexible about time, but I know with you, I was very aware that you weren't flexible about time. So it was Correct. Like- Correct. And let me tell you that the flexibility is freeing. And for me, it is largely contingent on the health of my spiritual life. Sure. I'm better able to relinquish that control. Mm -hmm. Even to the degree that right now, all we can say about the way that I'm living life is that I'm in a free fall. Yeah. No, definitely. Into like the universe's plan. Because I don't have one. I'm not, quote unquote, making any tangible plans. I have not set any goals 
which is not to say that I don't have visions and dreams and all that shit, but there is no timeline. I don't know what day it is anymore. Yeah. I mean, neither do you. No. I don't know what day it is anymore. And I just want to add to that this, what the time tracking has done for me also. Mm, Yeah. I have an app where I track pretty much every waking minute. Which Maria, I I know where this is going. So, I, but let me just tell you, it sounds so fucking crazy. I know when you describe it because you're like, I've become so free about time, and I just like don't like I'm just in a free fall. No, and I I know it's going to a good, but it's just so I track every single waking moment of my life, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds no, ca- I know counterintuitive, right? And I'm gonna explain why. I know, yeah, I know. So it's an app and it's super easy. It takes four seconds to like end a task and start a new one. So I know a lot of people like plan out their day like that. They plan out the moments. I don't. I don't have a plan. There's a couple things in my week that like have a set time, certain appointments or dates that I made with people. But other than that, I really just love the freedom of flowing in and out of like all my creative shit. Mm -hmm. And... If I know that I am tracking mm-hmm. my time, mm-hmm. like I have to input gym or whatever, mm-hmm. then I'm aware of how I'm spending time. Mm-hmm. It helps me be more present because I know that I'm actually being intentional mm-hmm. about what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And there are times when this like old pattern totally. can come up in my head and tell me that I've just fucked around all day. And I'm a piece of shit because I'm wasting so much time, blah, 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 blah. And I get to look back on my day and see how much time I actually spent, not necessarily on work or quote unquote being productive, but that I am so happy about how I have spent all of my time. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I've been productive, quote unquote, or creative or whatever you want to call it. But I've loved the way I spent all of my time. Mm hmm. Like, hands down. That's always the case. I mean, right. there's there's occasionally, like, I fought with Chase Bank for however long <laughs> because whatever. But also, it's not like there's any goals attached to it either. Yeah. Because the app sends me a, like, weekly here's how you spend your time mm. email. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this, like, six months and I've looked at it once. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not trying to change anything about it. All that it does for me is helps me to be present. Yeah. You know, and like if I if I eat dinner, like I've tracked that and then I'm like, what am I what am I doing next? How do I want to spend my time next? And sometimes it's just like fucked off for half an hour. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't use it to pressure yourself in any way, which is fascinating. In no way, shape or form does it feel like pressure. Right. Yeah. It's not. Wouldn't be working if it were. Right. And I just don't think many people could could use an app like that. I know I'm magical. Magic. No, but it's like the reformed time psychopath that you are. I'm just kidding. Truly. I've been to I went to Sedona last month and I went to Vegas earlier this month. And I think for both of those trips that I tracked a little bit Mm -hmm. as I was going to the airport or whatever. I was working at the airport. And then it fell off and I never picked it up and never gave it another thought. Right. No, it's cool. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's just another. Yeah. Time is so interesting in the way people. I think it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. The way that we've all been um, conditioned to deal with time. And then that just affects everything. My whole stuff with time. I think I naturally tend to not want to worry about time. But I do also like being on time generally like I was saying like an appointment or go to school whatever but it was living in Spain right out of high school because that Spanish are super fucking chill with time right and I just loved it there because it felt in alignment with how I wanted to be Mm -hmm. and then the second year I was there there was this girl this German girl which I ended up dating a German guy later I love Germany I've spent a lot of time there so like I understand Germans really well and I really actually love them but they're rigid and like time. They're a very structured society. So like everything was on Spain time there. And mind you, like I went to like Spanish school from like eight to one. Everybody's on time for that. Like everybody went to class from eight to one. No one was late. Everybody went to that. Anything outside of that, 
none of us had obligations or anything. It was like a free for all party, beautiful existence for five months. So like we were all going to school from eight to one and then you did whatever you wanted, you know? So no one was ever on time for anything ever. You'd say you want to meet at the bar at nine. No one would get there till 1030. You say you want like people to come over for dinner at six. No one's coming till seven, but you're not going to expect everyone to show up. And this one, I absolutely can understand why she got upset. It was to the degree. So she was a belly dancer and she was amazing. And this one time she decided she was going to give us a belly dancing class. And it was like at an apartment. And there was probably like eight of us invited or something. And a bunch of people were late, maybe up to 30 minutes. And again, okay, two sides. One, it's a class. You know, we're calling it a class. So that gives it some structure to respect. Two, it's her time. You know, it's her time. She's giving her time and we should respect her time, et cetera. Okay, I, those, I totally understood. And then on the flip side, it's like we're living in Spain. This is a free class you offered your friends. We're all late to everything. You definitely should have caught on to this in some way that that happens. And no one means anything by it. Okay, the last part is what mattered to me the most was her reaction. She had every right to be like, man, I'm kind of annoyed everybody's late. You have a right to your feelings. She was livid scolding us and we're all like young including her you know she's like 22 maximum I'm 18 19 I don't know maybe people were 30 but some people were 24 like we were like all in that range or whatever right she was livid and like angry during the class like mad at us steaming so angry and I was close to this girl and I remember not having great boundaries yet be able to speak what I'm feeling so I'm just kind of witnessing it but inside being like this is bananas and awkward it made everything awkward we're all also young so we all don't have good boundaries yet nobody's able to like say anything it's awkward that experience stuck with me where I was like that is the furthest from what I'm comfortable with dealing with when people are like that about time and I get it But like, it's not cool. And I was like, this is really unhealthy and unwell. And I don't want to be around her like that. How can I ever live to these standards? This was not like school. Oh, right. Yeah, there's no way you could ever live up to these. And obviously it was like her stuff. To be honest, like way later, she ended up living on farms and stuff. I bet she's so chill as fuck now, honestly. But man, to just see the like complete and utter meltdown over a fucking off the cuff dance class at a person's apartment in Spain while we're all living our best lives. Right. And that's exactly maybe not quite as bad but that's how I was yeah and that yeah that obviously in retrospect there's something else fucking going on 1000 percent. it's not about the time no it's, that person is having a trauma response yes yeah you know? totally of being disrespected or of or being of picked up late unimportant or unimportant or yeah like being forgotten being or yes being disrespected to- that's no, what that is thousand percent actually, that one actually probably doesn't have to do much with time totally but it was an interesting like lens into time where I was like absolutely I'm never going to want that in my life like I need to be able to be late to things I need to be able to just like exist and like I need to be able to cancel I need to be able to just whatever and like you know there's always the varying degrees of you deal with individual basis. Like if somebody keeps canceling and then you depends on like the amount of friendship you have. Is it worth being like, are you OK? You keep canceling so much. Right. Or is it somebody who's like being rude and then you assess that? It's like, fine. There's all these different things. But yeah. Oh, yeah. And everyone I think you handle differently, too, because I know that I still have friends that are scheduled to the fucking hour, right. to the minute. Right. And. She's I'm still got Maria. I'm just, oh, that's so funny. What? I am still not used to the way you are with time. If I'm honest, it's what like little mean? moments. I just I like I'm still not used to like you just being like chill. Oh, I get what you're saying. I thought stuff. you were saying sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Do you get ahead. what I'm saying? Like I'm not used to how you are with time. Still, sometimes I know. I it's remember like that lo- came up. Yeah, did before. it? When we had dinner with the podcast launch, uh-huh. when we went out to celebrate. Yes, you were just like. I still get scared that you're going to react badly when I'm late. Oh, I did tell you that. And I was like, nah, dude, I'm so chill. And you like got all teared up because you were so happy. (laughs) (laughs) Now I do remember that. I forgot. Mm -hmm. I forgot. You know, I'll still get thrown off. I still do when you're like 1130. Like we'll say 1115 and then you'll just text me like 1130. And I'm like, great. (laughs) 
<laughs> like I love this shit. Yeah. But I'll still be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how this is now. Cause why? Because I just like subconsciously forget that you're chill about time now. Got it. Love it. <laughs> also, it's nice because we don't have jobs. Like we don't have. Oh, guys, I my I'm done with my job. Woo. Speaking of transitions. Oh, we don't have nine to five jobs. We don't have nine to five. Or but I don't have a job at all. You have some jobs. Yeah, but. you do. Oh, okay. The podcast. I quit. And now the job is done, which is amazing. Yay. But what I was trying to say with that was just because I was reminded that I'm not doing that job anymore, since neither of us have typical jobs right now, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, it's super nice. I love it. That means there's so much freedom and openness. And so it is the thing that triggers all of us when we're not working with it of the untethered feeling of like, I must be doing something wrong because I don't have this like rigid schedule to follow. Right. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to what I was saying before about how much faith and trust has been a part of why I can be more flexible now. Yes, 1000%. I think that the way our society currently functions, it's very hard for people to trust that they'll be okay. Yeah. I know I felt that I would not be okay. Totally. If I wasn't constantly producing or on the move or planning or part of a structure. Because I think too, we need to acknowledge the getting in trouble aspect too. Oh, say more about that. So like if you're late to your job, you get in trouble. Right, which is actually, I was going to ask you that before because you were like, I'm not time to like work and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask, is Mm -hmm. that because there are consequences if you're not? Absolutely. And what I liked about the last job I just had, they were so amazing about time. I think you can always overdo a concept. I do believe in respecting people's time. I do believe in doing my job well. I do believe in having integrity in what I'm putting my time into. And so for like my job, I'm going to care about what I'm doing. I'm going to care that this time is what we're set to start our meeting. Right. Because it's a group project. Yeah. You know. And so of course I care about that stuff. So that makes me on time for sure. But separately from that, oh my gosh, my catering days, it was like, if you're not on time, the customer is going to be mad at you. You're going to deal with hungry assholes. And like, I'm sorry you're hungry. Like, people are mean and angry and you can deal with that. Or I was like that same catering thing. I had not enough resources. A lot of things could go wrong and bad all of the time. And they were constantly, which was constantly making us late to things that were very time sensitive. Mm-hmm. And so I dealt with that a lot. That anxiety of just constantly on the edge. And then my first server job ever, if you were even, you Okay. I'm just I'm just realizing that I am so physically uncomfortable. Oh. I am not even present for this conversation. I oh. don't know what to do. I don't even know what I'm saying because <laughs> this thing is also cutting in and out constantly. Oh my gosh, Maria. I didn't know. You've been really great at faking that you're not distracted. Oh, I mean, I don't know what we've talked about at all or what I've said. I have no idea. Wow. Like- Fascinating. I'm like comfy cozy as fuck over here. Like, no, I can't fake this anymore. Yeah, totally. Okay, hold on. Mic change. If you want to go on the ground and hold it with your hand, just this press gonna this. going to be a better. Hey. I, yeah. Oh, poor Maria. I'm back. Is that better? She's been... <laughs> poor Maria has been like. <laughs> Someone different has been in my body for the past hour. Wow. <laughs> Speaking through me. This is going to be funny for the, when you listen back to this, you're going to laugh. I know. Because everything was going great. Okay. But apparently she's been like on another planet of discomfort. I've been in she was... a self-imposed microphone cage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back now. Now she's standing like a fucking frog on the floor and she's so happy. Indeed. I'm so happy. So we were talking about time prisons. <laughs> time prison. While I was in my microphone prison. I was saying something. Okay. The catering thing. And then second thing. My first ever fancy server job, which is what I've basically done the last like eight years of say like six servers that night, there was always one closing server. And that was the only server that had to stay through the full last table. Okay. So just imagine you're called the closer. That means you have to stay the longest and other people are going to get cut the before you. Sir. The pre- Shut up. 
Yeah, that's me. And you, other people are going to get to leave before you or whatever. If you were even 30 seconds late to pre-shift the meeting, you were the closer. That sucks. And and like sometimes, yeah, I mean, okay, it made you be on time. It made you like respect the time. Blah, 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 blah. But like the fucking times where you were just having the worst fucking morning and you got stuck in some fucking weird traffic or the Boston buses and trains were being stupid and you were so stressed out trying so hard to get there on time and then you're punished by having to stay longer that night. It felt terrible. Oh, yeah. And made us all on time. It was just fear and shaming us into being on time. And I think I can only speak for restaurants. I'm positive that must be true in the corporate world, too, in, in whatever ways. But like every restaurant's like that. Varying degrees and now things are changing, et cetera, et cetera, depending on your manager, too, blah, blah, blah. But the idea is very much like you cannot be late. You cannot be late. You have to be right on time for a pre-shift and... Yeah, I think you're going to be in trouble otherwise. A lot of messaging that goes into that, too, of like there's either the tangible consequence of like you have to be late or I know when I worked in the corporate world, I forget the exact wording or whatever it was, but it was like strikes against you every time you were late. And then that would lead to like formal consequences, blah, 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 like a write up like, oh, my God. So it's a lot of fear and manipulation I think and also it sort of forces you to give more importance to that thing than it actually has because you're just trying to avoid these consequences. Yep. Yeah. No. And I just think that like why I even brought that up was like I think a lot about people getting really stressed out when things aren't going as planned. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if some of it comes from that feeling of like I'm doing something wrong. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even if you're like in a car going somewhere and you don't have anybody that's like holding you to a time to be there and you get stuck in traffic for 30 extra minutes and you're like having a meltdown when you like have nowhere to be. Right. Because, well, and then I know from what I used to feel about that, it was like, I mean, all I was was this little ball of being hard on myself. Right. And if there was some unexpected right. time expenditure, right? not that I was in the first place going to spend the 30 minutes that I ended up in traffic. I wasn't going to spend that <laughs> reading the book on my nightstand that I hadn't picked up in two weeks. But I would then tell myself that mm. like, oh, you could have read today, right. you know, or whatever the fuck else the activity was. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, it was Which like fascinating. It was like I even thought of that. I've wasted time. I've done something wrong. I've missed an opportunity. I've, you know, and I still say to you sometimes because it's still a narrative in my head. And mm-hmm. I think you clocked this the other day because I don't act on it anymore. It doesn't control me. But I sometimes still have that narrative of like you're squandering this yes. time. Yes. No. Oh, my God, guys, you have to hear this crazy story because I'm so proud of Maria. And like we notice our voices now and we literally got all this equipment last week we didn't record last week we got these beautiful microphones we got the fucking all of it so fun we sit in the living room we open it we listen to our voices and we're like having so much fun we're like and back to our original point like this is a big deal big fucking deal this is big like podcast step big tangible podcast is evolving step yep and then something we've been looking forward to for over a year and we're like doing this for like an hour or two And then Maria goes to the bathroom and comes back and is just like, okay, I just want to acknowledge some voices I'm having. And I was like, yeah, what? Like no clue where she's about to go with it. And all of a sudden she's like, I have these voices telling me, what are you doing? You've wasted the day. You're just squandering your time. You're just screwing around. You're just screwing around. And I was like, oh my God, what? (laughs) Like I was flabbergasted that those were what the voices were telling her when we were literally doing something so whatever the word you know (laughs) so so meaningful and important to us yeah yeah and like towards a goal oh yeah like like, actively working towards a goal right but i think because first of all that goal however loosely we're able to hold it does not fit into the old paradigm and narrative totally of what we were brought up with which is 
what's productive and what we're allowed to do, yeah. at least in my head. Totally. We're not making money off this so, right now. Like, so the goal, therefore, is null and void and yep. and a worthless endeavor, so uh, according to the old, yeah. the old narrative in my head. Right. Even though part of a new equipment or new software or whatever the fuck it is, like part of that, there's a learning curve. You have to get familiar with the stuff. Right. There's no avoiding that. Right. It's not like I could have just sat down and immediately known just what to know do what and we the were shit do- was yeah. instantly set up. Like we had to do all that with that was part of the process. Yep. And that also brings me to something that my mentor said to me at one point in time. I was telling her about like how I get stalled on projects sometimes because I don't know what the next step is. So I'll be doing something and I'll be in a flow because part of it makes sense to me. And I'm like, oh, I'll get to this point. And then I don't know what to do beyond that. So I accomplish that part of it, holding the word accomplishment loosely. Mm -hmm. But I get to that point and then I get scared and put it down and I never pick it up again because I'm like, well, I don't know what to do next. Totally. And she was like, okay, but like in order for it to move forward, you're going to have to figure out what to do next. So why don't the next time you need to work on that project, say the next half hour or the next installment of time or the next day I decide to pick it up is only for figuring out what to do next. You won't do it. You'll just right. figure it out. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And I was like, oh, yeah. That's part of the process. Right, that's part right, of the right, process right. of doing the thing Right, is... Figuring out what to do next or letting it come to you. Right, 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 letting right. Letting yourself not having be inspired. To, not having like a rigid idea of like, I'm going to have to do this thing. Yeah, like with the podcast is like, like every time we will record and if we're not recording, then it's not worthy. Right, then it doesn't count. Then it doesn't count. And it was like, it's so good we had last week. It was also our off week. Right. You know, that's what's so funny too. Like it was our off week. It was a bonus. We were fucking around and finding out, you know. So like today we were able to just record because we already figured out the equipment. Yeah, but my brain wanted me to. Oh, yeah. And you knew all this. It was just so funny. I was like, what? No, I know. And so was I. Wild. We're like literally doing the thing. And your brain is trying to be mean to you. That's hilarious. Oh, absolutely. My brain is always trying to be mean to you. Hilarious. But that's, again, back to what could be perceived as like a neurotic activity. That's one of the benefits of me tracking my time. Because Mm. it just gets me so, first of all, so present And I, in each moment, I'm like, do I like the way I'm spending my time? And to be fair, a lot of the times that end up on that tracker is like rest for however long I rested, nap Mm open-endedly, watch a show Mm -hmm. when I can get myself to do that, Mm -hmm. dick around with whatever it is, but I'm at least writing it down. Yeah. And that is helpful for me in retrospect on those days when those voices come up and they're like, you've squandered your day. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I didn't. Because however you want to define squandered, I'm super happy with how I spent my time because I was intentional about it. Totally. Totally. Because you're being really mindful right now. So that tool is useful so you can look at it and be like, oh, actually, I I spent my day in a way that I liked. Right. I I spent my time connecting with my friend. I Mm -hmm. spent my time, you know, snuggling with Maisie. That's on there sometimes. (laughs) That's her kitty cat. Little cat baby. Okay, like just to like pivot back for one second. I also want to say the being in trouble thing with jobs. That was what always got triggered with the friends that got mad at me for being late. Whatever the amount of mad. Just I know they're going to be annoyed. I know they're going to be frustrated. I know I'm going to get a response and I know I'm going to get really triggered by it too because then my codependency is going to be like, oh, they're going to be mad. And then I'm like extra trying to like be on time and like not fuck it up, you know, or whatever. Totally. And which that is, was really hard too. Which is a great topic maybe for another episode. But it's like a nice practice to have now when it's like you see someone being rigid about time and they might be mad at you and you're kind of like, okay. I don't like when people are mad at me and I don't this is like me practicing not being codependent like I did the best I could I'm not disrespecting you or your time something happened like I got caught up you know like whatever right and I think so much of that for us at this point Mm -hmm. is like if one of us is late or has to reschedule or it's because we're prioritizing ourselves and our own well-being over Mm -hmm. making that person happy about being on time Mm mm-hmm 
And we're not even touching upon the people that have chronic lateness, which usually is ADHD. Could be, yeah. Not always. But I know several people with like pretty bad ADHD that like kind of is un- either undiagnosed for I've known them before they were diagnosed and then after they're diagnosed, whatever. And they all have this like really chronic lateness thing because they're like super scattered right before they're trying to get out of the house and like can't focus. Right. And like chronically misplaced things, et cetera, et cetera. And those people I feel terrible for that they live in a society that just doesn't allow them to be late. Or, you know, of course, I want them to also have tools for themselves to be a bit more on time in that whatever that on time means, it just means they're not also just so frantic when they're trying to get ready. That part is more what I care about. Which also makes me curious, and I would have to think about it more though, but that I still have raging ADHD. Sure. And I also have a lot of tools that I rely on. Totally. Which I wonder if there was a pocket of time in there where my use of those tools led to so much rigidity got rigid right yes right yeah 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 right I think that could have also been a thing that happened totally which makes sense yeah because ADHD symptom wise at this point if I'm late it's probably not for ADHD reasons but I think originally it probably was right like my friends in college oh my god this is so funny would constantly make fun of me because I'd be like okay I'm leaving and I would walk out the door yeah and I would come back in like four times for right. having forgotten things. Right. And then it would be 15 minutes later that I would actually be like on the road. Right. That's so, ADHD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, either way, now those people are chronically in trouble. Right. And like, that's not great either to me. Nope. And those people, I feel like they know that they're going to be in trouble. So they're operating in like even more of a manic state and unable to just be like, I'm late. It is what it is. This is how I am. Totally. Like, this is how I function. I'm going to forget something four times in a row and I'm going to be 15 minutes late every time. Right. And I think that's the space that I'm in now, which is like. Totally. I know that it will take me 30 minutes to get ready to leave the house no matter where I'm going. Right. Which is another time tracking thing. Like having that clarity. Yeah. Of like if I want to leave the house at three o'clock. I can't stop what I'm doing at 10 till. Totally. And that's you being so mindful because that is the thing. Like, so someone close to me has really bad ADHD and she struggles with that so badly of like not being able to be mindful enough to stop herself at 2.30 knowing she needs to leave at 3. Right. And that's that space that I see. And I see how I'm really good at that. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, if I was missing this skill, psh. Right. Like, that's why I'm on time to things. I'm Again, I'm not saying I'm 100% of the time on time, but I'm a generally very on time person. You're not perfect. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but no, totally. And this is another thing that whether you're aware of it or not, you do, mm-hmm. which is like, it's the mindfulness mm-hmm. and it's the acceptance of the reality of it. Totally. Yes. Which I think I had a hang up about for a long time because it was like, I want it to take 15 minutes door to door Mm. and it fucking doesn't for me. Totally. I am not a person that can turn on a dime. Totally. From one task to another or from being at home doing something to leave. Right. So it was like the judgment thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And it was like, no, no, no. It no matter what the fuck I'm doing, it's going to take me 30 minutes to leave the house. Come on. And (laughs) I got to be fine with that in order for it to be a thing that doesn't stress me the fuck out. Interesting. Totally interesting and totally makes sense yeah like for me I like like that yeah there's never been judgment around it which I I'm lucky oh my god my brain does go I'm like okay I plan my time in my head a lot but it's not in a taxing way right I'm just realizing it's something that I know a lot of people some people really struggle with and then if they are doing it they're also like being hard on themselves and judging themselves or like worrying about if that's okay or not or this just like other narratives right for me it's very natural to just be like okay if I have to like be there at two It takes me 15 real 15 minutes to get there. You know, I got to start like looking at getting ready by like 2.15. You know, like let's just start. Stop whatever you're doing at 2.15 and start doing your thing. Right. It's like I just like backwards time all the time in my head. Right. To be leaving the house at the right time. That's the time I aim for. Like what time do I want to be exiting the house? And that's how I am for work. Right. I want to exit the house at this time. Right. 
because I live so far away and find no parking, I'm always like, okay, add 10 extra minutes to walk to your car that's five blocks away. Okay, that's over another episode. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, time, guys. Be kinder to yourself. Also, time is melting, so all of this is null and void. I mean, I think that's right, though. And that's why I think everyone, if you listen to this episode, you'll relate in some way. Whether or not you relate exactly to how we relate to time, you're going to be like, yeah, time. What a crazy fucking thing. Everyone's feeling it. Time is just... Right. How do you think about time? Is it working right for now. you? Yeah. Is it working for you? How do you think about it? What emotions does time bring up for you? Do you feel like there's enough of it? Are you really excited to do get older? Do you feel like older? there's too much of it? Like myself? Nobody's Cause... excited to get older but us. I know. I like it. Me too. I thought I was 38. That's right. And like <laughs> happily. <laughs> no, me too. I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, when we have kids... We're so worried subconsciously, and I'm I'm not even saying you and I actually are, societally, whatever the fuck. We're so worried about, like, having kids at 40, but, like, it's going to be so cool for them. It made me think of that meme that's going around from Father of the Bride. It's Steve Martin. I haven't Mar- seen it. Okay. You haven't seen the meme? No. Of course I've seen Father of the Bride. Right. Oh my okay. God. It's literally... We have to find it. It's Steve Martin and Diane Keaton just sitting on a couch in their outfits from the movie and whatever the line of the meme is it i'm not going to do it justice but it's just like how insane is it that in 1996 this is what 40 year olds are supposed to look like and they do genuinely look like they're 60 genuinely because it's like their haircuts and their outfits and maybe them and both of them have aged like incredibly well because everybody's just like aging in reverse right now everybody but like whatever it just genuinely you see it and you're like oh my god And so I was thinking about it and I was like, our kids are going to be like, look at these like lit 40. They're never going to think of the concept of 40 the way that we do. And we're still in the place of being scared about it and being like, oh, I'm so old. Our generation. Yes. Our generation. Like, I'm so old. Like, oh, God, I haven't hit these milestones. Like, on and on and on. And it's like, yeah, because we were all just given that trauma at birth. But like, yeah, our kids are going to be like, what? 40? Like, that's nothing. 35 oh my god you looked like babies like they're gonna look at our pictures they're gonna see the stuff we were doing and they're not gonna just be like oh my god at 35 it's over (laughs) i know how did that get all caught up in all of us it did it did that's so wrong i know i mean that's the people felt back then but it's just like not true for us and yet we're like living like it is and that's what's hard right that's what's hard right. when you're actually 35 and quite sprightly and look young and you're vibrant and you're having a great time with life and you're not in like a miserable marriage or, you know, whatever. And like, you know, your kid's not 12 and which isn't a problem. Like none of these are bad things. But I'm saying that many people found themselves there and felt trapped. And it's like, yeah, you're not even there and feeling trapped. And yet you're somehow like finding the other reason to be upset is that you don't have all the things you're supposed to have by now and you're off track. Oh, right. It's just like so, it's wild right now, man. Out in these 2023 streets. It's 2023. It's crazy, right? It's going to be 2024 soon. Sweet. Kind of wild. Cool. We did it. I know I went off top. I veered at the end. Sorry, guys. No, I like that one better than the other one. Oh. The, the better than the hour conversation we had yeah because i was most of the time trapped in my microphone prison whatever you're gonna listen back and be like no that was great <laughs> you are because it was great I, i'm gonna edit the episode this could be seven minutes yeah long. <laughs> <laughs> just the end just Those the end the of the only episode. parts i like <laughs> just kidding i only liked when i was in frog pose right she's legitimately a frog right now yeah so i'm gonna funny. have to work on this Okay, so we have headphones, guys. Oh, my God. You got to get a new cord. I No, I just feel like my head is trapped. Okay. I know. All right. <laughs> well, I think that's... It's a personal problem. I know. A personal problem. I don't need you to solve for it. <laughs> that is a personal problem. I also wonder if we can try recording with... Or you could without headphones. Perhaps. You can hear me talking. We're in the same room. Yeah. Try right now, just for fun. Just take them off. And okay, hang on. Guys, wait, how long into this is it? So many sensory problems. 127. <laughs> At hour one, minute 27, I finally hit my stride. <laughs> <laughs> Having overcome all of the sensory issues brought on by the new equipment. Fuck the mic stand. Fuck the headphones. 
Fuck the seat. <laughs> Listen, I got to look back into it. If I got to see if I can get you a hands free. I mean, this is legitimately fine. I okay, just need good. a longer cord okay, okay, so cool. I can jump around. But you don't need a longer cord if no. you don't wear the headphones. Oh, that's true. No. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> you could have gone away. Oh, my God. That's so oh funny. Oh, my God. We're back. Oh, you're so funny, Maria. No, wrong cord. Wrong short cord. Okay, I've arrived at the podcast for the day. <laughs> now at 128, she's laying on the ground so happy. That's really funny. Maria. It took us an hour and a half. It took me an hour and a half. I it got sure it. did. I it sure it. did. No, yeah. Now you can you can extend that cord. You've, oh, you've, my God. Okay, this is There perfect. you go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, if you can just handhold your mic, we're good. This is fine. Thank you guys for coming to our first microphone podcast yay let us know how much better this is oh my god yeah also let us know what you think about time follow us on instagram and youtube at other maria podcast email us email us other maria podcast at gmail.com and i keep forgetting to say this but like y'all share this with someone share anyone it. share it Please don't be embarrassed that you like it Please share this podcast. share it just share it with a friend okay the end i'm done bye she's you have a lot of reasons to be embarrassed, whoever you are that's listening to this. <laughs> and we know life is embarrassing. Being a human is embarrassing. All right, guys. Be kind to yourselves out there. We love you. Thank you for coming. Love you. Bye. Bye. This is Other Maria, the podcast of our real life conversations about personal evolution, society, relationships, spirituality, and everything else. We're getting vulnerable in these good faith talks and sometimes respectfully disagreeing about which of us is wrong. Just kidding. There's no right and wrong. We're just two friends sitting around talking shit. Wait, talk uh, about deep shit, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy.